Before we begin this episode, please know that in discussing many things, suicide will be mentioned. Thank you. Fill to Capacity, Crazy Good Stories and Timely Topics, Podcast for people too stubborn to quit and too creative not to make a difference, inspiring, irreverent, and informative. Stay tuned. Hi. I'm Pat Benincasa, and welcome to Fill to Capacity. Today's episode, Finding Stories of Grit, Struggle, and Success. My guest is Alex O'Keefe. Welcome, Alex. It's so nice to have you here. Hello. Hello. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure to uh, come on your fantastic podcast, Pat. Well, thank you. Now, I want to let our listeners know a bit about you. Uh, Alex lives in Halifax, England, runs a business, and is a footballer. He hosts the podcast, The Self-Made Mind. So, Mm -hmm. Alex, tell us a bit about yourself, how you came to do The Self-Made Mind, and what does that mean, The Self-Made Mind? Hmm. Good questions. Yeah. I was going to start Pat, initially by apologizing to your listeners because I understand I've got a really strong Northern accent from the UK, but I don't think you should ever apologize for who you are. So I'm going to re- retract that apology and I'm just going to say, I hope you understand me and we'll crack on. Uh- <laughs> Thank you for that disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just before we before we start, Pat, I'd just like to say I think you do a fantastic job with your podcast. I've been listening to the episodes. Um, I think you're a great interviewer. And oh, some of the guests have been re- really interesting as well. So thumbs up from me. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. So um, a bit about myself, Pat. I... Um, Obviously, I just grew up in a nice, humble, working-class background. Um, you know, very humble beginnings, uh, hard-working parents. Um, they just did everything they could to provide for the family. You know, they didn't. We, we didn't have a lot of money, um, but I think that's you, you learn lessons from that within itself, don't you? And I think I learned to work hard from from a young age, um, and I think my my mum particularly did everything she could to try and set us up well in life, particularly from a mindset point of view. I think she, she instilled a lot of positivity into, uh, into me and my siblings, you know, when, when we were young. That's probably the greatest gift anyone could ever give you, I'd say. In fact, I've got this. I just wanted to show, obviously, I'll explain it for the people listening, but... Yeah. This is a, a poster, what was put on the side of mine and my brother's bed, right? And it's a poem. And it's the man who thinks he can. And it's it's a famous poem. And it, it's basically, it's just about self-belief, having that just grit and determination from, from such a young age. And that that's the type of stuff that I was brought up with. And I just think that's... You don't really realise it at the time. Yeah. But now that I've got older, I think, ah, I can see what you've done there, Mum. Yep. Um, and it's really paid off, you know, for me in my life, I think. So great childhood. Wasn't great academically. Always against the grain type of character. More creative, entrepreneurial type. Mm-hmm. Uh, used to sell cans of Coke to all the kids at school in the playground. Um, that type of stuff, that type of typical, you know, entrepreneurial story. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started my first business when I w- was 18. I started a, a, a landscaping business, landscape gardening, just literally walking around my local neighborhood, knocking on doors. Can I cut your lawn? You know, all that type of stuff. So I got, I got a good, good uh, early experience with, with business, really. And then I stumbled on an opportunity to go live in Spain, uh, Marbella, 
for 12 months doing the same thing, landscape gardening. Um, and while I was out there, I got into DJing. I think you'll find from my story, it's kind of just, you just go with the flow. You find something you're passionate about and you just go, you just go with it. I have to say, Alex, it yeah. really it really speaks to your openness that when life presents things, there you are just going with the flow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I saw something recently, Pat, and, and, it, and it said the most debilitating thing you can do is give yourself a label because people live the life and, and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm meant to be a lawyer. And that restricts you from ever adapting as a person. Yes, you know, and and that, and people might stay with that for their whole life, and and have that identity as one thing. Whereas I think you should be open to new possibilities. Oh, I agree. I I do it from the back door. I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. Yeah. Yeah. But as I said to someone the other day, yeah, I'm an artist, but life is my canvas. Mm, yeah. It's yeah. not just making the little objects or big objects. Mm. All of a sudden, it dawned on me. It's my life. This is anything yeah. that comes my way. I'll take the materials and I want to do something with it. Yeah. Much yeah. like what you're doing. Mm, mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Very good. I DJed for four or five years. I was doing that full time. I was traveling the UK uh, around Europe as well. Become our part of a duo and we're really successful. Ended up playing the biggest festivals in, in England and stuff. Crazy, crazy. So, yeah, that, that went really well. And then in the meantime, I had a part-time job working just in a furniture store mm -hmm. just to kind of cover the expenses because you know what the music industry can be like. It's kind of all over the shop. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was while I was working in that furniture store, I was listening to audio books. I were Mm -hmm. trying to grow as a person and I stumbled on a uh, an audio book I was I, I was thinking of I need to start my own business it's like the music industry is good it's not going to last forever it's not a longevity sort of thing um I read a, an audio book called how to start a window cleaning business <laughs> really I, yeah um and I had that in my earphones, walking around the the furniture store in this warehouse, I was just taking it all in. And and probably a, a month after that, I, I just quit the job and I went for it. Yeah, and, and I started my own window cleaning company. Um, ever since then, it, that were five, I think nearly five years, four or five years ago now. The company's grown. I've, I've got two separate businesses now. So one that just does domestic houses, um, the other one does commercial and industrial properties. Um, so yeah, we've got I think there's four. There's, we've got four vans on the road now. So business is great. Uh, I absolutely love it. I love business just in general. And then I've obviously started the podcast, which is what what you asked about. When I mentioned there, I was you know listening to audio books, and and while I was doing that, I'd, I'd listen to podcasts as well, and I just thought. I'm getting so much value from listening to these stories and audio books. And I just thought I'd love to do that myself and speak to inspiring people and get their stories. And, and I think there's, you, you'll probably know this yourself, Pat, you get so much out of it personally from speaking to these people. Yeah. But you also get a lot out of it because you're passing it on to other people as well. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. You, you personally benefit and then other people benefit from listening to it as well. So it's, it's just such a beautiful concoction, I think, what, what occurs. Now, I want to stop you there because you mm. just walked into my next question. So thank okay. you for that. <laughs> now, in your podcast, you talk with people who have amazing stories of grit and determination. And some mm. of your guests range from Holocaust survivor, first female to win the UK Commonwealth boxing title, mm. 
-hmm. and the world's fastest single leg amputee. That's just to name a few. Now, Mm -hmm. tell me, Alex, why is it so important for you to tell these stories? I just feel like there's such an injustice that people don't don't hear this stuff every day in everyday life. I kind of had to go out of my way to hear these stories, and I think it should be standard for for everyone to hear these stories because it's so important to hear that things can go wrong in life. Mm-hmm. But as long as you learn from the mistakes, you learn from the failures, you can go on to do anything you want. And I think that 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 message in itself comes above everything else. You, once yep. you know that, you can do anything. Yep. Yep. So I think it's so important to be a kind of a a taxi for people, kind of a, you know, <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? But yeah, that's I, a lovely I, way of saying it. Ta- I want to taxi this information into other people's brains and I just, I'm really passionate about it and, uh, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. You can tell, listening to your mm. podcast, mm. you can tell that you love the story. You love when people overcome all the odds. I mean, you're a scrapper. I don't mean to be personal here, but yeah. I, what I love about you, you're a scrapper. That's what drew, drew me to your podcast. <laughs> so, uh, the idea of being a scrapper, it's like you, you know the price that people have to pay to achieve or do what they need to do. It, mm. it really comes clear in your podcast. Mm. And that makes me wonder, Alex, of all the stories that you've done, is there one story that really affected you or really got under your skin? Yeah, I mean, there could be a f- two or three that I could say that that's the case, but there's one that really does stick out. And it's someone from, from over, over your end of the world. It is the uh, film producer, Ross Katz. And his story was just so relatable. Um, it just it just talks about, like I said it earlier in this chat. It's, it was work a working class background. He had a burning desire to tell stories, and he just loved film. Um, he'd talk about going to the cinema to watch like Raiders of the the Lost Ark. I think he said he went ten times to see that film. Um, and it'd be on the edge, you know, his knuckles would be white because they were gripping onto the edge of the cinema seat. And just the passion that he, you know, kind of explained he had for film. But there was just one one thing lacking with Ross that he just didn't particularly believe in his in his abilities. Mm-hmm. And, and he dropped out of film school. Um, it, his parents didn't have any money to help him, and I, he talks about just kind of one day just 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 following his his heart, and he moved to Hollywood, thousands of miles away, just to pursue pursue his his dream, and um, just coming from that space of not having anything but passion and the heart for what he for what he does, to get to where he he's won Golden Globes. He's been nominated for Oscars. He talks about um, being stood in a lift with David Bowie at the Oscars and just thinking, people like me don't don't get to experience this, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> that, that, that imposter syndrome, what, what we all hear about, and uh, the fact that he's got to where he is today from where he was, I think that epitomised the whole reason why I wanted to share these stories because it just shows that if you have the love for something and you're passionate about it, you'll break down doors, you get there. Um, Yeah, that is a very, very good episode. Yeah, I listen to that regularly. You know, as, as you were talking, I can't help but think for anybody who has dared to do something there's always 10 good reasons why you shouldn't, you can't, it won't happen. And mm-hmm. there are always the people that volunteer to tell you that. They're always yeah. there. Yeah. And what makes these stories so powerful is that 
they don't let the doubt paralyze them. They don't let that inner critic stop mm. them. They mm. get in the car and they drive to Hollywood. It's, it's that kind of primal belief that mm-hmm. there are some people that just instinctively go towards the light. Yeah. And Ross, he's one of those people. Those are the people that you seem to, to gravitate towards on the show. These mm-hmm. are people that, that know how to go towards the light to find meaning and, and realize their dream. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And because I did question, I question him about, you know, um, the knockbacks, the rejections. Yeah. And he said, he said every time he got knocked back, it was just like <sighs> that you can't put that fire out inside. It's just like I believe in it. I, I love it that much. I'll, I'll just find another way. Yeah. You know, especially especially um in the film industry because a lot of it's subjective, you know, and it? it's yeah. it's based on opinion and so I think as long as you believe in yourself, you're going to end up where you need to be eventually. I agree. And for some yeah. people, you wave a no in front of them. It's like pouring gas on the fire. It mm. turns into, mm. I'll show you. Oh, yeah. You say yeah. no, let me show yeah. you no. And then you, mm. you forge ahead and you do what you need to do. Mm. It reminds me of a, another episode. I spoke to a chap called Jamie Peacock. Um, and he plays rug- rugby league over in, in the UK. And he, he's won, I think, nine or ten Super League titles, which is the equivalent of, you know, Premier League in soccer and football. Um, he, he actually was on trial at a, a, a club when he was, when he was younger. And uh, the, the manager, the coach said, you'll never make it as a, as a Super League player. And um, look what he went on to do. Exactly. So, <laughs> people can use it as yeah, as a as a as a ignition. Yep. To, to light the flame e- yep. even more. I'd like to move in a different direction. From what I read about you, you you created a online community through your podcast. But mm. you're a busy guy. It's like you have this real life community where you're doing fundraising, you're helping folks, you're very visible in doing things. And you did something recently called Andy's Man Club Event. Mm. Now, for all our listeners, what is that, Alex? This is so interesting that you picked this up, Pat, because I was literally with my friend yesterday, uh, Luke Ambler, he's called, and he was the guy that founded this charity, Andy's Man Club. Um, we actually went yesterday, we went and climbed the the tallest mountain in the in in England okay. yesterday yeah aside a subject but I mentioned I mentioned that you you asked about this and he just found it amazing that someone from across the pond like yourself is picking up and and it's reaching you know that that far afield um it, it got started from a sad story his brother his brother-in-law so his his partner's brother um, unfortunately, took his own life. Um, but he actually gave me shivers when I, yeah. when I said that. Then. Yeah. Because it's it's just so rife nowadays, isn't it? His brother-in-law took his own life, and it, it just it just shook the whole family, you know, like it does, like it does, you know. I've I've experienced it myself in my family. So I think, like we we talk about lighting up people's fires this it, it lit up something inside of my friend Luke and he decided to start a local group where men could come once a week to speak about how they feel you know break the stigma he started a campaign and and this this was the this was the logo it's it's okay to talk mm-hmm. he started that on social media and it went viral it went viral across across the world okay. um, from our small town in Halifax. <laughs> um, and ever since then, it, I think they've been going for four or five years, similar to when I started my business. Um, they now have got, I think it's over a hundred clubs in the UK, all over the UK where men speak 
where men come to talk once a week and it's reaching much further afield now. It's such a powerful place where people can come and speak about the feelings. And it, it, I always remember, because I've, I've interviewed Luke actually on, on my podcast to speak about Andy's Man Club. Mm-hmm. And there's a quote that he said when he, when he was talking about it and, it, and it was, people make permanent decisions based on temporary problems. And that's what is trying, it's trying to just, you know, make a make a big difference and, and bring that suicide rate down, especially in males. And I'm I'm not a part of the the company as say, but he, he's one of my best friends and we regularly do fundraising for the charity. Um and yeah, we've just got to keep spreading the word on just out of interest, Pat. I mean, what what is the movement like in the US regarding suicide and oh, there's so much to talk about i did two episodes mm. on teenage mental health mm. and then i did another one on suicide prevention and the mm. person i interviewed he is a suicide survivor and he had a substance abuse problem and he went on to form the heart and mind connection and they work with veterans teenagers older adults and as i began to research Suicide. Now, I I taught in art schools and art colleges for 30 years, Mm. and suicide is very, very real, especially Mm. among teenagers, especially teenagers of color or the LGBTQ kids. There's a problem. Mm. And with COVID and people being forced to separate in the lockdowns, suicide rates began to climb and also mental health facilities there's not a lot not enough to satisfy the need Mm -hmm. so the fact that coming full circle to what your friend uh, luke has done having a venue for men to talk freely you know it seems like in the culture i'll speak for the states there's sort of this tough guy thing that men you can't really talk about feelings that Mm -hmm. somehow it's not a manly thing to do I, you know, if you look at our our movies, our TV shows, oh my goodness, there's a really strong message. And so the fact that there's a venue for men just to talk about what they feel, I think yes. is a safety valve, a really mm. neat, I hope something like that happens over here. Yeah. You never know, Andy's Man Club might end up um, starting a US arm. You, we don't know, but it's such a it's such a deep sort of, subject to talk about in it but yes it is um, and so that brings me back when you titled your podcast self-made mind what did you mean by that i just wanted to speak to people who who i could and who people listening could really relate to and i know that people can relate to someone who's come from nothing Mm -hmm. and created a great life and existence for themselves. I did actually um, target more people who were born into rich families or okay. and so people that started with nothing, you know, mm-hmm. people that started with nothing and created something meaningful for their life. And that's where the self, the self-made mind sort of come from. Someone who's gone through that, that journey of mm-hmm. self-discovery and self-improvement, personal development. I think there's a lot of, good wisdom uh, and lessons to be learned from from them type of people. Yes. Alex, you know, we've talked about a lot of different things here. Mm. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to say? Uh, in the past 12 months, I became a father for the first time. So naturally, I'd, I'd just like to say uh, I love you Body Moon or Keith if we ever watch this back uh, your daddy loves you so it's it, that's a, just another life life changing event everything I do now is is for my daughter and, and my wife and it just puts things in into perspective doesn't it I just when people say oh how's how's she doing I'm, I can't really put it into words how, how it makes you feel. I just, I don't know. It, but, yeah, I can't explain it. It's Bodhi Moon, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Great name. So with your <laughs> wife and Bodhi Moon, somehow your life has taken on this whole different meaning, mm. this whole mm. different way of seeing the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do you think is the ramifications, like the things you do moving forward, knowing mm. that your daughter is looking to you, her dad, mm. okay, mm. how will that affect you, you think? What, how does that play out in your mind? Everything I do or plan to do now going forward, I think my daughter's going to see this mm -hmm. and I want to be a positive influence for my daughter and show her that this is what your dad did. You can do this. But I recently turned 30. Um, yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so on my birthday, I decided to run my first marathon. And I, and I did that with the thought of, I can explain this to, to little Bodie when she gets a bit older. Mm -hmm. I can say, look, the normal societal thing to do is go and get drunk with your friends. But I don't like that. So I went and ran a marathon and I, and I pushed my physical, mental limits. And I think that's what people should do more. Um, you know, the friends I used to hang about with will, will probably say that I'm, uh, I've become a boring old man now. But uh, <laughs> it's just because I don't go and get drunk every weekend. But yeah, I, I, everything I do now, I just think my daughter could see this and either A, be inspired or B, maybe learn something from it. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Nicely said. Well, Alex, it's yeah. it's been a pleasure having mm. you on here today. And I want to say, folks, check out Alex O'Keefe's podcast, The Self-Made Mind. Your interviews are just very moving, I have oh, to say. Thank you. That means a lot. That well, does mean a lot, yeah. And I've really enjoyed just chatting to you, Pat. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, since my daughter came along, I've not recorded any new podcasts. So it's something I'm going to be getting back into. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and this is the first podcast I've, I've actually appeared on since since becoming a dad as well. So I've really enjoyed it. You've I think you've lit something up inside of me again, speaking on this type of level, you know. Alex, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> So, honestly, I mean that. I mean it, honestly. So thank you again. And folks, if you enjoyed Filter Capacity, please tell your friends because word of mouth really, really helps. Yeah. Tell them all. <laughs> thank you.